Congressman Jim Jordan, it's great to have the chairman at the table and nice to meet you in Des Moines. Thanks for being with us here on Bloomberg. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on in Washington, but you're here for Donald Trump mm -hmm. and you're speaking to us as a surrogate for the campaign. The conventional wisdom that we keep hearing is Donald Trump needs to top 50% to call this a big win and that the campaign wants to top the all-time 12-point spread yeah. to make sure that this is driven home. Have you set expectations too high? I think he's going to win. I mean, I don't know what the margin is going to be. My guess is he'll, be, he'll win by greater than 12, but um, I think he's going to win tomorrow night. I think he's going to win in New Hampshire. I think he's going to win in South Carolina. I think he's going to be our nominee. And most importantly, I think he's going to be our next so president. So does the margin which, matter? I don't think the margin matters. you got to win, but uh, the, I mean, if it's big, all the better. Does the margin matter to the man himself, though, if not to you? Winning matters. I mean, I learned a long time ago, winning beats losing every single time. So the goal is to win. Whatever that margin is, you know, I'm fine with it. But I do think he's going to win big. Who knows what the number is. Um, I don't think the cold weather hurts his supporters. I think they're coming. I was at a rally today, and it was packed. And, you know, I, I don't know what the other candidates are getting, but my guess is nothing close to what turning away people when it's 20 below zero. Uh, they, they came out. Um, so it was a it was a big crowd. And he did a great job as I spoke for like an hour and a half and it was people laughing, people cheering. It was typical Trump rally. So more uh, conventional wisdom is that Ron DeSantis has spent so much time here and has developed such a strong ground game that he might actually benefit from the bad weather. You don't see it that way. I think Trump people are coming again. Um, you know, I know he liked our state. He won, won our state by eight and a half. Ohio used to be the bellwether state. He's won it by eight and a half, both in 16 and 20. Uh, you see what happens when he holds these events like he had had down in Indianola uh, mm -hmm. earlier today. People come out even if in this kind of weather. So I think Trump supporters are going to be there tomorrow night at the caucus. I don't know which caucus I'm going to, but I'm going to one here in, in the Des Moines area. Tom I think tomorrow earlier in the day we're in Fort Dodge and then somewhere tomorrow night. But um, yeah, I think he's going to win. Do you worry about what happens once New Hampshire gets here? No, I think he wins there too. Uh, like he's winning in South Carolina where Nikki Haley's from. He's winning in New it's Hampshire. It's a lot closer the there though. He's winning in the polls big time here in Iowa. National polls he's winning. Every poll against Joe Biden he's winning. Um, I think the American people know that this guy did what he said he was going to do. In fact, that's what I said today at the rally. I said the reason they come after him so much is because the swamp and the establishment, they hate someone who actually goes there and fights for the American people and does what he told the people he was going to do when they voted and put him in office. He said he was going to cut taxes, he did. He said he was going to reduce regulations, he did. He said he was going to put conservatives on the court, he did. He said he was going to build a wall, he did. He said he was going to put the embassy in Jerusalem, and he did. I mean, you can just, and I'm forgetting a bunch of other things, but that's the kind of guy he is. And you compare his record to what we have now, from a secure border to no border, from safe streets to record crime, from $2 uh, dollar gas to 3 4 $5 gas, to stable prices, to record inflation. I think the American people want Donald Trump back in the White House, and so do I. We understand that Donald Trump is in regular contact with your new speaker, not so new speaker, Mike Johnson, that they're talking on the regular. And I wonder to what extent he is driving the debate on spending and if he supports this idea of another CR. Well, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out when we get back. But I do know President Trump's on the phone with lots of people you know, all the time. He's, mm -hmm. he's, one, he's got more energy than anyone. He's indicated, anyone. though, that we should not fear a shutdown, that that might be a way to gain leverage. Well, what we should do is shut the border down. Right now, we should say time out. I mean, we're on pace to get to uh, the equivalent of the entire population of Ohio. I mean, we're the seventh largest state, almost 12 million people. And in Joe Biden's first term here, we're, we're first and hopefully only term, we're, we're, we're on pace to get to 12 million people, migrants coming in the country. That is, that is unbelievable. So that has to stop. I'm for suspending entry and, 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 and stopping this which is where President Trump is, which more importantly, I think is where the American people are. Polling shows eight out of 10 Americans think it's a crisis on our border. That's what we gotta focus on um, in, in, this, in this spending debate we're having and in that supplemental debate that, mm -hmm. that's going on in the Senate. What they seem to be rolling out over there on the border doesn't, doesn't seem to make much sense to me. If Mike Johnson were to go along with what it seems Senate negotiators are getting closer to with the White House, would his job be in jeopardy? He's not gonna go along with it. Mike's not going to. I think he put out a statement yesterday. We're going to have a conference call tonight with uh, Republican members. I'm sure we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the, the spending bill. I think we'll talk about the whole the whole uh, impeachment inquiry. We'll probably talk about a number of things. Well, there's also reportedly talk of another CR laddered again to two dates in early March. He said he didn't want another short term CR. What if he does that? Uh, I mean, if that's what has to happen, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see. Uh, I know what Senator Thune, Senator McConnell talked about that last week. Um, 
you know, we got the deadline coming, coming Friday. What I'm for is the longest spending we can get. I'm actually for a longer term CR because hmm. if you get one past April, then the bill we put together last, last uh, spring, as you all know, if you get past April 30th, there's an automatic cut that kicks in, which I think would be good. And you use that as the leverage, that as uh, the leverage to get the kind of policy we want, which is good policy on the border to stop all these illegal migrants coming into the country. Let's talk about the border a little bit. Some details from a tentative deal leaked a couple of days ago, and Trump supporters specifically were outraged. You don't have to spend much time on social media to see that. Uh, very upset about some of these details, whether they're real or not, including a daily quota for migrant crossings yeah. and some other things involving work permits. Senator Langford says, this is a Rubik's Cube. We need patience. Does he deserve that? Did negotiators deserve more time? Well, I think what the American people deserve is to have a border that's actually a border. I mean, right now, I was down there last week with, with well, two weeks ago now with, uh, with Speaker, Speaker Johnson, where we had 60 some members go down. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we put together uh, a, a big portion of, of HR2 in our committee on immigration enforcement. What the American people expect is a commander in chief who will actually enforce the law and secure the border. That's what we're not, we don't have right now. And I would always, I always point this out. It's intentional. Joe Biden decided on day one when he changed three, three policies President Trump had in place. He told anyone coming, he says, we won't have to wait in Mexico while we evaluate your claim. There's no wall to uh, get over. And once you're in the country, you'll be released and you can go wherever you want to go. So when, you, when, you, when that message is sent, it was sent on January 20th, 2021. No wall, no wait, and you'll be released. Everyone came. Well, he did everyone say, came. actually, don't come to the border, realizing that you don't agree with the policies. I just wonder, you know, we've been talking about border, this. But if you come, you'll be let in and you want to get over a wall. Well, and look, by the way, that might be the reality, but I'm just acknowledging what he said. You know, we're, we're here with Rick Davis today, who spent a lot of time with Senator John McCain trying to get this done. And this has been going on for over 20 years here. Is a little more time worth the investment? And I know you want to see a closed border tomorrow, but it looks like negotiators might be on the verge of something. Well, we got to see the plan, but based on what's leaked out thus far, there's no way I'm going to go for that. There's no way okay. uh, Speaker Johnson's going to go for that. There's no way the so this is a waste most important. There's no way the American people are going to go for that. But again, we haven't seen the details of what Senator Langford has. But based on what's leaked out, there's no possible way we're for that. And I think Speaker Johnson uh, even even put that out on social media. How long do you think we'll be calling Speaker Johnson Speaker Johnson, given all of these different well, battles he has to navigate look, and knowing what happened to his predecessor? Yeah, look, look we, the, he should stay Speaker Johnson, for goodness sake. Uh, I was against what happened to Speaker McCarthy. Uh, I thought that was wrong. And I, I don't think it's appropriate to do that to Speaker Johnson. We need to um, deal with the border situation. Uh, we need to uh, finish the impeachment inquiry and decide if we're going to move forward with articles. And uh, we need to make sure President Trump is, is wins in November and is our next president. That's what's got to be the focus of, of Republicans this year, because I think that's what the American people want us to focus on. But there are members of your conference who have already threatened the motion to vacate. Mm. So do you not think there we'll, is any we'll risk we'll look, of like history said, repeating have, itself? We're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a conference tonight and we'll have a, a good. Well, you're close to the Freedom Caucus. What do you hear? Uh, when you hear guys like Chip Roy or Bob Good suggest that, yeah, you know what, we've got a motion to vacate on the table. What do you tell them when you're alone in the Capitol? Let's work with Speaker Johnson. Let's do what we told the American people we're going to do. Let's fight to stop what's happening on the border, and let's make sure we get President Trump in the White House. If the chair were to be vacated, though, hypothetically, would you make a run for speaker again? I'm not going to get into that. It's not going to be vacated, <laughs> for goodness sake. We That's what you said to that. us the day before you ran. <laughs> That's what we, let's, let's just let's, let's not even go there. But I'm for Speaker Johnson. That's what I'm for. Well, something else you are actively working on is the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. And I know you've had uh, a bit of an issue with his son who did mm -hmm. show up in Capitol Hill this past week. His attorneys have now said if you were to re-subpoena him now that the impeachment inquiry yeah. has actually been formalized with a vote that they would cooperate. Do you plan to do that? And would yeah, it be a public we're, hearing? We're definitely looking. Uh, I know our, our chief counsel in the committee uh, has talked to Mr. Lowell, Abby Lowell, uh, Hunter Biden's counsel. Mm -hmm. And... Um, if we can work this out, we, we plan to do this. But this is how it goes. We, we passed the contempt resolution through both the Oversight Committee and the Judiciary Committee. And now in this time frame between when it goes to, uh, from committee to when it goes to the floor, we have some time to work that out. And that's why I think they sent us the letter. And hopefully we'll work it out and then we'll get Hunter Biden in for a deposition. But we need to talk to Hunter Biden. We need to talk to Eric Schwerwin. We need to talk to Tony Bobolinsky. We need to talk to, to uh, Jim Biden. We just talked to, uh, we, we have Kevin Morris, who is with Hunter Biden, who is the guy who bought $875,000 worth of uh, Hunter Biden's uh, artwork. We're talking to him this coming week, 
uh, this Thursday or Friday. Uh, so we'll complete those uh, interviews and depositions, and then, and then we'll have to make a decision as a conference if we're moving forward with articles of impeachment. That last uh, oversight hearing he showed up for mm -hmm. uh, upset a lot of people. That was some real drama. I, I wonder what the time frame is for getting him back. Well, we want to do as quickly as possible, but uh, our chief counsel will negotiate with Mr. Lowell and we'll figure that out. Talking weeks, not months. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, we got to get all those people I talked about the, that we need to talk to. I think that happens in the next three, four weeks. Our goal is to get it done by the end of this month. It may, it may trickle into February a little bit, but by early February, we, we, we want that completed and we want to take that with the compelling evidence we have already mm. and uh, then make a decision.